Hi, this is Chelsea. This is Michael, and we are Coffee with Creators. Come sit with us and let's talk about content creation and all things creative. So welcome to our scrappy little podcast. Welcome, Chelsea. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. We We are are... so good at doing this, right? We are that deserves a round of applause. It does. It does. (laughs) That was great. So it's, we have a little, a fun little guest here with us. We do. We do. He's a... Uh, I mean, he's not little. No, he, far from little. He's, as a matter of fact, <laughs> he considers himself a... What did he say the last time he was here? He's like a very scary looking man, like standing. I, I think he's like six foot something when he was... He yeah, was I don't remember story. how he described... I don't remember like the actual name he gave himself, <laughs> but I do remember him describing himself as... Like a burly man. <laughs> yeah. He's far from it, though. Like, just he's listening so to nice. him. Yeah, he's like the goofiest person you'll ever meet. And it's awesome. I love it. Yes. Welcome back to the podcast. Um, Matt, or I am Matt. Milks. Thank you very, very much. I, I tried to, um, I tried to, thank, thank you for the applause. I tried to sustain the manly impression with a lumberjack t-shirt. I thought, I thought your guests <laughs> might, might appreciate this if they're watching this on YouTube. They're like, look at that beard and that, that lumberjack t-shirt. He must be a mean dude. I was. Li- he's a real man. He's a real, he's a real man. man. If there's such a or, thing, or, or, as, or as Chelsea <laughs> said as we first came on this show, look at how shiny your forehead is, or something, <laughs> something to that effect. Just a lot. That's a lot of. That's a lot of. There's a lot that's of. a lot of forehead. There. Well, I'm, I'm follically challenged, Chelsea. You know, I'm got like wonderful curly I'm locks sorry. like yourself, but I did once. I'm so I did sorry. once when I was you, 21. If only you can flip your head upside down because you have a mass, like a, a really nice beard going yeah. on. So. Yeah, if I, if I didn't have this beard, I'd basically be 90% egg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a great Chelsea. just way You know, when your kids, mind. like, you know, you hard boil an egg and your kids draw a face on them, that, that would be me. So, <laughs> not the Easter egg. Exactly, exactly. Easter's fun. <laughs> Easter's fun. You know, oh they can make God. things look like daddy. Oh my God. That's, that's awesome. So good. That's awesome. Well, thank it. you for. for for coming back, honestly, like I was really excited to start this podcast. I, and, uh, yeah, totally. Um, Myself too. Really, really happy to be back. You obviously are my 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 <laughs> podcast buddies. That was a very scary sounding dog. <laughs> Chelsea, sorry, take it on. easy. That's yeah. <laughs> Chelsea's <laughs> practicing her voice. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, Matt, I was actually listening to your your previous episode on the dot the dot. I was going to say dot cast. Oh, dot cast. Hello, Try, Annie. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry excuse me. Chelsea's like it's not a uh, doing like dog impressions, and I'm just like having a stroke <laughs> here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Arnie of podcast. No, um, I really enjoyed that that episode. It, it went on for like two hours, was it? it yeah, it, they sneak with up on you with Chris. They sneak up on you those those podcasts. They, they end do. up being you, you don't realize how you know. I think if you're having fun, it's like this isn't work. This is like friends having a having a phone call. And, um, you know, that was a real, that was a really good one for me because, you know, I, Spawn Point, AKA Chris for me was one of the accounts, um, and a lot of people will know this anyway, but he's one of the accounts that I first saw when I was at ground zero, I was at, you know, zero followers coming onto the gaming side of Instagram and went out searching hashtag gaming, hashtag PlayStation, hashtag Xbox, whatever. And I found his account. And at that time, he was probably, yeah, you know, in the 20,000s. And I was like, whoa, this guy's got some cool stuff, nice photography, mm-hmm. etc." And I was like, yeah, you know, that's that's kind of, although it wasn't the look I was going to go for because I couldn't, I couldn't replicate it. I didn't have, you know, the lighting or the, or even just didn't have the tech. It was an inspiration for me. So like, here I am like three years later, I've been on stereo with him. He's been on my podcast. I'm sitting at the same probably amount of followers he was when I started. So it was like this kind of, it was very rewarding this week. It was mm. just really nice, you know, to, to kind of, they, like they say, never meet your heroes. But, you know, so far I've been actually quite lucky because everyone that I've looked up to on Instagram has actually been really nice. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a really good experience. Obviously, you know, the same experience I had with you guys, like, you reach out and you kind of tentatively make this connection. You think, ah, oh, you know, I've put myself out there and and look what's come from it. You know, we, we hang out, yes. we chat, we've been on two podcasts. Now you've been on my podcast. We've done stuff on, on uh, clubhouse. And you know, if you don't yeah, for, put yourself for out For those there. who are listening, we always like chat actually. Yeah. Matt, Chelsea and I, yeah, we're always True. just like 
sending messages through through Instagram. And um, qu really quickly, for for those who don't who are not who are not aware of what stereo is, that's kind of like your version of of Clubhouse. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, it, I think it's only available in you in the UK. Is that correct? No, I think it is actually I think US based because when I go on, oh, it, is it? Okay. It is largely when you, it's one of those apps where you, as soon as you load it up, you get thrown into someone. That's the weird thing with it. That's a bit different than Clubhouse. Like Clubhouse is very, I see Clubhouse is like LinkedIn of podcasts, whereas Stereo mm. is like the Instagram of podcasts. You you open the app up and you go straight into two people talking. You don't know what they're talking about. It's, it's very, un. It, it, you don't really search and you've got to swipe through live people until you find someone that you like the sound oh, of. That is interesting. It, it, that the is thing that I read, the, the only difference being is, with Clubhouse, obviously, we had a Clubhouse the other day. We had a room full of people that could talk. With Stereo, it is um, two people only. But the cool mm. thing is, you know the avatars you get on your iPhone, like the emoji kind of avatars? Wait, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. Your, your, yeah, your faces move. You can create your avatar and your lips move as you're talking live on yeah. the app, which is actually quite engaging. It's, it's really cool. Um, and then people can That's send cool. in like live questions, live voice notes and things, and then you can answer them live okay. on the show. So it was cool, you know, and, and doing both of the shows, they both have their own kind of coolness to them. Um, but yeah, it's it's. That's definitely more of like what a live podcast would be. Yeah. Since it's just two people talking versus mm -hmm. Clubhouse, where it's Clubhouse is like a party line. Yeah. Remember those? I do remember those. <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I think it's called a party line. You just... You, you all get on the phone and you're all just talking for some weird reason. You're all um, you're all on the landline. <laughs> yeah, the landline. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I enjoyed that episode very much. And actually, one of the reasons why I was so happy about that, like this week, because Chris also started following me, and just like you, I've looked up like to his like his account, his photos, his his YouTube, and I'm like, man, this this guy is crazy. Like him, and he mentioned it on your podcast all year, or or Ultra Links. Yep. Like that guy is is definitely one of my inspirations, and so um, I was a little bit intimidated by Spawn Point. But oh, then after he's listening, such a nice guy. Yeah, let, listening to so the, nice. the, the the podcast, I'm like, this guy is so nice. Like he sounds so genuine, and just like, I think it's the beard. I swear, you guys who who can grow beards, yeah, are always it's, like you always scare me. We, well, we, we, we're obviously compensating for something else, so you know, <laughs> it's when when you you've got those kind of you know those those handsome jeans and stuff. You and your brother, damn it, yeah, you know, and you've got us over here with our our pale complexion and our gingerness, and you know, we've got to grow these these beards. But no, he, you know, he's a really nice guy. But what I love about Chris is this kind of laser focus and this laser commitment to kind of achieving those kind of milestones like I looked at his goals at the beginning of last year and they're like he smashed them out of the park and his goals for mm -hmm. this year I'm sure hit I mean 75,000 subscribers in one year on YouTube that's crazy is phenomenal yeah, awesome. but getting one video out a week for 52 weeks of a decent quality and keeping the same look you know because if you've obviously seen his pages they all follow this right the way across from Instagram all the way across to YouTube, very much like you guys as well. They follow this aesthetic right the way across. And mm -hmm. I, I don't do that. And that's something, you know, I, I'm looking to change. Hence the, you know, the chaos in my dining room tonight is yeah. is trying to get a look that replicates me because I'm, I'm not always kind of, you know, rainbow and RGB. It's not my, I like it. It's like kind of a hobbyist thing, but it's not, you know, a 41 year old dad's, default look mm -hmm. so i'm mm -hmm. trying to find my way i'm trying to find it you know and you guys You're have been rebranding yeah kind of in, in in some way like you guys have been a massive influence people like envision matt um you know kevin over on Inst you know i could name probably 25 accounts that uh, that mm -hmm. inspire me um but yeah you know this hopefully come sunday you'll see something cool I'm excited. I'd love to see I it. I am excited too. Yeah. I love seeing new newly created spaces. Yeah. Especially when they when they come from from a place like you're coming from. Like when a space has real meaning, I love that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you know, all, all credit to you guys. I mean, the last what are we say in last 3 4 months has been it's been weird in some ways, but a complete roller coaster in the connections that I've made. Um, you know, like Jared, obviously you introduced me to him and then next Tuesday I'm on his podcast. You know, it feels like a long time ago now. Okay. We we spoke, you know, originally, like all the way back before. It was way before COVID. We were we were away on holiday. It's like almost 2019. 
how how fast time goes. How really has it been? Yeah, because we've been locked down for a year. So we we were away um, on a camping holiday, and obviously that must have been before last March, and it definitely wasn't when it was cold. So it must have been late. And it sh- it could have been. It's probably around April because we just April. started our podcast like That's around that we, time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it just so. seems wild that so much time is so time has passed. But which um, actually, you you are right. It's almost about a year. Yeah, it is March. Just realized Next. that. Yeah. Next month, I think we will have been doing our podcast mm. for a year. For a year. How exciting. Yeah, it's crazy. We should probably we do a little separate celebration. Yeah. yeah, let's have a let's party. Let's do a clubhouse thing. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> let's get drunk on clubhouse. That'll be fun. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So um, today's episode is actually going to be a little different from what we used to do. And mm-hmm. just because I think, you know, Chelsea and I have been talking about this for a little bit now. And one of the goals of Coffee Creators is to basically make this into like an actual hangout without, uh, you know, we don't have the live audience, but let's make it into a discussion, right? Let's talk about the things that actually happen in the the community of like content creation and just, you know, anything that that topic basically touches on. So uh, one of the things that came into light as of recent was the um, gear shaming. Mm. And um, I don't know if uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw my story post about this. <laughs> I did, I did see <laughs> it. Oh yeah, and I, I went looking for the comment because I was going to come as the White Knight and just kind of defend you as a, as a hashtag gamer, you know, because they was like, you're not a gamer. I was like, well, I'm not a gamer, but I look more of a gamer than Michael with my setup. So I've I've got some <laughs> some, but I couldn't find the comment. But it is very interesting. I do feel, mm-hmm. however, that your probably your headline is the ultimate gaming setup probably triggered a lot of people because uh, no that's not that's actually not the the headline is it not what, uh, my, what was the... no my my headline is a one-of-a-kind gaming mm. setup sorry one that's of, that one of a kind. is a one-of-a-kind which, which yeah it is a one-of-a-kind which it is it is you know. i didn't say it was the best gaming setup or uh, the the proper gaming setup <laughs> not, not not at all but it goes back to my point right like one of the reasons why i wanted to invite matt here is because we obviously have very, very different aesthetics. Like mm. even when it comes to like equipment, like you use uh, PCs, I use Apple products and we don't, there is just this one love for technology. That's it. We all mm-hmm. have different preferences. It's almost like, you know, different uh, tasting clothes in like favorite color. It's just as simple as that. But people seem to like to categorize people based on spec choices and spec yeah on spec we're spec, right? we're spec obsessed uh, and, mm-hmm. and it it does drive me crazy because this is what drives people to basically bankrupt themselves it's like what works for you works for you and you know mm-hmm. it doesn't need to be the best if you're enjoying you know we we there, there's this really kind of frustrating thing with setups is like you have the aesthetic of the setup and you battle each other on how good your setup looks. Like my setup as a gaming setup, I, I'm aware to a lot of people looks amazing. Like when I posted this comment on Instagram tonight of like, I'm tearing it all down. I had loads of messages going, oh, why are you going to wreck the perfect setup? Da, 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 da. And it's like, well, it, you know, I get that to some people, Aesthetically, it looks like the best gaming setup. That was cool. Chelsea's lost it. Was that well, your, Eng- your American well, we'll, accent? We'll, I we'll go into this in a bit because we did the whole English <laughs> accent. I'm going to try and throw in a few Americanisms tonight. Um, that was great. People look at my setup like, hey, man, that setup's like gnarly, whatever, however you Americans say it. And I know the spec isn't that good. It's not that good. You know, it's a, it's a Ryzen 5 B450F. You know, it's like, it's okay. It's okay, but mm-hmm. because it's got RGB and it looks cool, and I've got the Leanne, you know, oh, funnily enough, it's in the back of this post. It almost like knew it need to be in this conversation, but my setup is gone right now. So the PC is there's no monitors attached to that PC behind me. It's just <laughs> it's just plugged in. It's like it's, it's just like, mood lighting it, at this point. It's basically like yeah. the, the scene in RoboCop where he's just got no legs and he's just wired up. <laughs> it, it's just over there doing nothing apart from looking pretty. But um, you know, people look at it and go, that's, "That's a gaming setup because it has a big tempered glass screen and it's got." rgb but you know your pc mm-hmm. could be better than mine but just because it's yeah. stealthy black it, you know some this kind of this it's not a gaming pc because it's stealthy uh, you know yeah it- which is it's crazy who who comes up with this who is to say that it's not a gaming pc because it's right 
Like why? Yeah. One, well, who, one, who cares? One of the reasons I wanted to ask Matt to, to, to have this discussion with us is because I remember when you first um, guest was a guest on our podcast, I was I was telling you how intimidated I was mm. to be a part of like to follow you. And it seems like, oh, it's a it's like a PC gamer, like royalty RGB, right? Mm -hmm. It's like PC gaming, all that RGB lights. It's like I don't I feel like I don't belong. And then you were saying that, no, you welcome everyone and there's no gear shaming here. It doesn't matter if you have like a slow PC or the, the fastest one. It's like it's for the love of gaming. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, that's the thing, yeah. you know, with, with the RGB in the title of it, ours was very much around the mood you create in your gaming setup. It's not necessarily what you game on. It could be PlayStation 5, 4, uh, Xbox, Xbox One X series, it, you know, PC. It didn't, it didn't really matter. There's people in our community which play on various different platforms we're all gamers and we all try and be a, a really positive influence on each other to improve our setups and aesthetically improve our setups you know no different to how the other side of like the work from home kind of vibe which you know you guys are very front and central on that kind of work from home studio space we all mm -hmm. push each other to be like how can we improve how can we create something that's you know imaginative and unique and you know not copy paste but our angle was more about the lighting of your setups, regardless of what you play on. And, and you know, we've dragged people along to improve it and change it. And we've we've got so many unique setups on there now, but I couldn't care less what they play on. It's not about yeah. it's not about that. So it's like you said, it's not gear shaming. Um, you know, it's it's just very frustrating when when people start talking specs. It's probably one of the most common questions all of us as gamers get in TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, what's the specs of your PC? Why does it matter? Right. Right. Why yeah. why? Or or how much did it all cost? Oh yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I've paid for it over like 5 years and half of it's like yeah. traded in and upgraded and swapped out. Like I who cares yeah. how much it, like Yeah, you don't really keep track. No, you don't keep track because you don't go yeah. out and buy it all at once. And I think, you know, a lot of people kind of think you've yeah. gone out and and splurged 8k on you know, it all at once, and you know you're millionaires. You know, um, I'm even sure if you did, who cares? Well, exactly. Yeah. But you know, the likelihood yeah. is it's been a process. It's been a gradual process, mm -hmm. and it's become what it is because you've built it up over time, taken a bit of inspiration from her and a bit of inspiration from him, and you've put your own kind of, you know, your own influence on it, and you've created something special. The last thing I worry about when I look at any of my royalty RGB friends and family is what's the spec how much did mm. it cost i just think mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. man you've created a really good looking space it's yours if it, if it can't get 120 frames per second i don't give a shit because mm -hmm. you've created it for you if you don't play games in it and you use it for photoshop i don't care it's yeah. yours and you've made an amazing space and that's what it's about and i feel people within our community do talk like that you know none of, none of the people that you have made friends with will reach out and go you know, can you list the 12 specs of your GPU, CPU, PSU, you know, all the yes. other acronyms, you know, mm -hmm. what are they all? They might go, I like that item you've got on your desk. What is it? Yes. Or I, I like mm -hmm. that. What is it? Or can you tell mm -hmm. me if that's any good? It's a bit different to kind of like, what's your specs, man? How much did it cost? <laughs> <laughs> i mean that american accent is just, just spot on. I, I don't know where it's from i don't know where it's from <laughs> i don't <even> know. <laughs> i think it's a made-up state it's the it's, was it, how many states are there 50, 50, 52 or something it's the 60th state it's below canada and go. somewhere it's north a secret of, state yeah somewhere north of new england below canada there's a there's a lot of states <laughs> below canada. chelsea do you do you find that in the the realm of filmmaking or photography the same applies like do we get people oh absolutely yeah what are your absolutely. experiences on that one maybe um, not personally but your observations yeah. i don't have i don't have a personal experience nobody's ever reached out and is like you're not a photographer because really of such and such yeah no i i've been very lucky i don't a lot of people don't they don't. They don't shame me for that, which is good. They just um, tell you you copied I, Michael's Michael's setup. You copy. That's what I get the most. That is what I get the most. Um, yeah. Apparently, you can't have shelves that resemble someone else. Damn you! Only Michael's um, allowed shelves. Take those shelves yeah. down. They belong to Michael. 
<laughs> ship them back to my <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I have seen lots of like in for not forums. What, God, what am I in early two thousand? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people saying like, "Oh, you're not a real photographer if you're like." When I first started, I saw this everywhere. You're not a real photographer if you're not using you know if you're not in manual mode. Or if you're not, you know, if you're not, if you don't know the shutter speed or the ISO. So when I was learning, I was like, okay, to be a real photographer, I must have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's not really gear related. <laughs> no, it is. I mean, I guess the topic is basically just why do we categorize people based on the choices that they make um, yeah. when it comes to like buying the gear, mm. the the tech, the, the PC, the computer, even the cars? Like, why do we yeah. categorize them? I mean, honestly, in my... Uh, you know, based on my observation, I think the most toxic, and I'm not saying every, you know, every group, but the most toxic that I've, I've, I've um, observed are in the gaming community and also in the car community, which is hilarious. It's, it's, it's really just like a big, it's always like a, a, about like who has the fastest, who has the best, who has the most money. And it's, it's kind of like that, which is very unfortunate. And one of the experiences that I, you know, I've, I've had my sh own share of like gear shaming, right? Like, why did you get that camera? You could have gotten something better. Why did you get that? Why did you get the Tamron lens? Like one of my favorite lenses is the Tamron lens. Like what's wrong? You couldn't afford the G Master? I'm like, yeah, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> is that what you're Tamron looking for? Is, I mean, that's Tamron the honest answer. Sigma. I couldn't afford it. So, but it Those works. Those are great lenses though. Yeah, these are perfect lenses for me. And honestly, I, I don't see why I would change it. And we get to the specs, right? Like what Matt said, in photography, when you watch all these videos, these reviews about the lenses, they get so detailed that none of them really matter in the real world. Like so detailed. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the reviews that go into that, the work that go into that. But people make so many like accusations. And you know, because I bought this, which is inferior, for example, compared to the uh, the more expensive lenses, they make me feel like I'm, I made the wrong decision or that I'm not a real photographer. So it's uh, when I share that story, so just to give a little bit of context for everyone, anyone who might be confused, uh, I have a video that's up on YouTube right now that's called the um, a one of a kind gaming setup. This was done last November or December. So it's been up for a couple months now. And the idea or the story behind that was that I actually uh, built that PC from the ground from the ground up. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's my first PC build. So I basically documented that that journey. And one of our good friends, Sengran, was very patient, patient in helping me build a PC. I've never built a PC in my life. And he was doing it through Zoom. And it He's was so sweet. It was hilarious so that how patient that guy is. And so he helped me build it from the ground up. And so he even helped me source out like the parts. And he looked for like the, the cheapest, the most um, the best deals. So the idea for that was I wanted to have a gaming setup because I grew up as a gamer. Like I can comfortably say that I am a gamer. Because as early as maybe what? Uh, when was the first? When did the first Nintendo come out? Um, 1985. Wow, 85. that was quick. Yeah, I think my husband is a huge gamer. Okay, yeah, he, so. he still has his original oh, Nintendo, Nintendo. Okay, so I have the Nintendo before it was Nintendo. We're talking about the family. I had the, the family system. The, uh, the yeah, the, the family cartridge in the top. Yeah, lovely, mm -hmm. nice. It's called the the family computer. Yeah, it, it, it's such a generic name. I love the family it. computer. So my brother I and too. I, I think we were like eight or nine years old, and. We would wake up at five o'clock in the morning. And back back then, this was unheard of for kids to wake up that morning just to play video games. So that's all we did. Like I played video games throughout my entire life. The only time I stopped was I was in my mid twenties. I'm a legitimate gamer, but I'm not saying I'm a good gamer. <laughs> you probably stopped in your mid twenties because society makes it like adults aren't supposed to play video. It games. wasn't so much as that. It was just like the no, no. It was just the the the. The way my life was going, uh, I wanted mm -hmm. to to uh, use more of my time for something that's a little bit more productive. It was it was a personal choice. As a matter yeah, of fact, I fought good. it. I fought against like stopping it because you know I was dating my you know we were still dating my wife and I, 
And she's like, let's go do something. And I'm like, I want to go game. And she's like, no, you know, spend your time with me. And so that <laughs> whole thing. And so I, I kind of just grew out of it, but I reluctantly, because I also wanted to experience other things in life. So because I went away from gaming, I said, you know, I'm, I want to go back into gaming. So I built my first PC and that was the story of this whole video. And so I made an entire video about it like this. Like, I want this space to look inspiring, to be gamer, like to, to, to appeal to the inner gamer in me and yet also show the more grown up side of me, right? Like I also love cars and I also love all this stuff. So I, none of that is pretending, that's really me, right? And so this, I got so many, well, I've, got, I've, I've had a, a handful of, of rather, uh, let's just say, um, okay, let's just say hateful comments saying that, you know, I'm not a real gamer. Um, why am I using this? I'm just trying to appeal to a wide audience for views. First of all, I'm like, well, why are you guys watching this? You know what I mean? And I, a lot of these audiences also saw me on, I think, um, Random Frank. Yeah, Random Frank P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he shared my my setup there. And I think that's a lot of how a lot of people discovered me. Mm. And so people started getting upset. You're saying that that's not you. You're gaming in a monitor that's not even 120 hertz. I'm like, first of all, I don't even know what that means. Second, when I was gaming as a child, I did not care what monitor or t I've actually had experience playing in a black and white TV. Yeah, yeah. Because we didn't have a TV. Like this is the only thing that's working at home. I'm like, let's, let's hook it up. Let's see if we can figure it out. And it, it wasn't really a black and white TV. It was just one of the, the things was broken. And for some reason, it wasn't a full color TV. <laughs> but I've experienced that, right? And to me, that's a gaming setup. To me, that's where I, the, the joy is playing the games. It doesn't matter what games or what system 100%. I'm using. hundred percent. Yeah. 100%. So that's where, that's why it's called a gaming setup, my gaming setup. But people seem to really hate that. And when I share that story, um, it's, it goes back to the whole gear shaming, right? Why are you using that mouse? As a matter of fact, just today, they're saying- I saw that. Oh, <laughs> you're using an MX uh, Master 3 mouse. I stopped watching when I saw the thumbnail. First of all, that doesn't make sense. How can you stop watching when you see the thumbnail? You, you see the thumbnail first before you start watching. So I tried to bait him. I said, well, you just, uh, you missed my surprise towards the end. I of the saw video. that. I, I like that comment. You're, 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 <laughs> very, was... you're very witty in your, in your comeback, to be honest. They're kind of like passive aggressive. It's like, I don't know how to react to this comment. <laughs> like... Because I wanted him to go, I looked at it and, um, uh, cause I said, I want you to, uh, you missed my surprise reveal, mouse reveal at the end of the video. And I wanted him to go, I watched it and I didn't say, any, say anything. And I would just go, surprise. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, I just wanted to do that. But no, he, he, didn't he didn't bite. So, But yeah, it's just amazing how that happens. And one other thing that I wanted to share is that my brother and I, you, you guys know who my brother is, Richard. Yes. He's a very big Microsoft guy. Like, I make fun of him all the time because it's like, <laughs> it's like, why are you using Microsoft? But it's just our little game. You know, we always yeah. make, make fun of each other. But... I completely respect why he likes Microsoft. Like he uses his own, um, as it's a Surface Pro, I think. It's a really pretty looking machine. Um, it's really cool. It's yeah. really nice, yeah. But it's it suits his, his personality. It's more about mm -hmm. what it makes him feel, not how it performs compared to others, right? So yeah. it, it's just a topic that's kind of crazy because I've also had people reach out to me and the person who actually suggested this episode, he's a musician. And I wasn't aware of this, but apparently in even in the musical realm or world, um, people say that, you know, they, they do the whole gear shaming thing as well. They're like, you're not a real musician if you use that guitar or I don't know what else they use. The only thing I can think of is a guitar. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Other How do you guys feel about sure. that? I mean, I find it very frustrating because I think that says more about the person who's shaming than the person who's mm -hmm. using the poor equipment because it's you know you kind of do what you do with what you what you have and what you can afford and you know exactly. it's it's no different to shaming of any other type whether it's fat shaming or you know bold shaming like you know chelsea pointed out my forehead when we first came on <laughs> i'm so you know, sorry it's, i'm so it, sorry it, he's never gonna let me look that it could be i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm just teasing but it could be any of those I things know. you know what i mean it's like it's why does it matter to you that there, there are people i genuinely believe that any of the people that go out there and whatever the topic is whether it is music 
photography, gaming, cars, baldness, whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's always going to be those people. I'm gonna, Chelsea, I'm going to let you off that one. Don't worry. I know it was fun. Okay. <laughs> but there's always going to be people that just get a kick out of making people feel like shit. And, the, yeah. you know, it's, I don't like it. You don't like it. It makes you feel uncomfortable. It, it's not mm -hmm. your personality. And thankfully, the broad spectrum of the people that we hang out with on Instagram and whatever, they are all, in a, they're not, they're like, not that. like that. They're on a similar mindset of like, good mm -hmm. for you. You're doing what you you do, whether it's the best you can do financially, whether it's the best you can do um, in the space that you have. You're just yes. enjoying yourself because you know what we love as creators is other people feeling inspired because it rubs off, you know, and mm -hmm. maybe may coming in. This is the thing. I guarantee you none of those people or the majority of those people are content creators because they would oh, know. Yes. So true. It's so true. They would know how it feels to be put down when you're putting out content passionately that you love, whether it is like, yes. you know, for example like my hp laptop is my work laptop i don't even own it it belongs to work you know i've kind of like hoodwinked it i've got a camera over there which is my it's my uh my 1100d i don't own it it belongs to work i've nicked it I'm, I'm, i've kind of like repurposed it at home if anyone from work is watching this i will bring it back on monday i i swear but like <laughs> it's taken me forever to get one of these and now i feel like you know i've i've kind of you know it's taken me a long time you know i was 30 yeah. 38 when i built my first pc i didn't understand any of it and, and i've enjoyed the journey and no one shamed me for it thankfully but the question that comes up when it you go outside of your circle no one on instagram cares what the spec of my pc is no one cares because they but when you go on youtube yes they will make fun of you for the type of headphones yep. that you have they they say you look like a man they've <laughs> said that to you Chelsea. Yeah, oh someone my on my on my setup video, they were like, "She looks like somebody I've seen." And then they said, "Oh, it's whoever." And they rattled off this name. I looked it up, and it's some famous guy YouTuber. I'm like, <laughs> "What? What the, what the <laughs> fork?" <laughs> I don't look like him, by the way. If you're all wondering, oh my God, I know people. people people will just find anything yeah. to to write in the comment section on YouTube. I've not experienced it really hardly at all on Instagram. One time someone said, so Autonomous had shared a photo of mine on their page and they made it like an ad. So a ton of people had seen it. And someone commented there was like, this dude needs um, an external monitor or something. <laughs> and I have an external monitor. It was just on the other side of the room that you didn't see. And I wrote back and I was like, not a dude. And he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh so God. like a lot of the times when you call these people out they usually don't have yeah a comeback they're just trying to know? sound cool Un unless it's That's michael and then he just gets all the hate <laughs> <laughs> michael gets, I, I love michael it michael gets so much hate I, uh, I don't know why honestly i don't know it's, it's, it's jealousy a, it's a very... it, it has to be jealousy pure pure and be. simple is your well you kind of done this to yourself michael you p make <laughs> you make it look like you have the perfect life and some people don't like it. The, the thing is, mm -hmm. you do put out... Now, the thing is, I follow you on Instagram, we chat, etc. I know that you do put the walks and all on Instagram, especially in your stories and stuff like that. And you do the dad jokes, which I love, by the way. That's like my, my, <laughs> my go-to every day. It makes him relatable. Oh, 100%. Like, I love it. But the yeah. problem is people... In, in, and Chris said this as well. People don't follow you to other platforms, not as much as you think they do. So the people on YouTube know you for YouTube and they probably associate you with like, mm -hmm. you know, you are this very successful kind of, you know, guy mm -hmm. who needs to post, you know, the best. And you, therefore, because you post the really attractive stuff, you need to be the foremost expert in everything that you post. But the guys that follow on YouTube know you're just a goof who yeah. is very good at you know what you do in photography and videography and whatever but we we kind of you've allowed us into your life to know a bit about you and mm -hmm. people on you and i get it i put videos up on youtube and within like two minutes there's like one like one dislike i'm like what the fuck i've just put it up i've just put it do you not like me that much not even 15 seconds like, it's like it's not, my my video isn't even <laughs> there's always that guy i know, I, you know it could be there is always it, that guy it yeah. could be a girl I, I know for a fact this is someone who 
doesn't like me for whatever reason because they've one got notifications on that i've posted a fucking video because <laughs> they've disliked that like i'm gonna get that yeah they've thought, like, i'm, I'm gonna, gonna get, get it. it i'm gonna get that video down you know so i'm like <laughs> i'm a thumb down before i'm a thumb up half the time and I, you know and i just think why what's your beef you, i'll say this though those are my favorite people and you know why they're your biggest supporters uh, they're still they watching your stuff. Always watch your stuff. I wish I could That's think that I, way. I, I just want to slap them in the face. It's just like, <laughs> dude, get off my channel. <laughs> like, you know. I think I, maybe that's why I don't mind the hate. Maybe that's why I, I kind of make fun of it because the more I egg them on, the more they'll watch. They'll keep watch. They'll keep mm -hmm. watching my channel. Not obviously, I don't want that. I don't need the hate. I don't need because it does. Where you know it 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 basic wears you down right mm -hmm. like you you definitely feel that but they are your biggest I, th I think first of all they like to say things like that because one like you said they're probably not content creators and most of them 99 percent of them don't even have a profile picture no they don't have yeah. anything that Trolls. that you can comment back on yeah so it's mm -hmm. just um it's a reflection of what it's basically what they want but they couldn't achieve themselves mm -hmm. and so yeah. instead of saying congratulations to someone they say oh the only reason the only reason you are there is because of this so they make up all these excuses and they try to bring you down because then they can elevate themselves compared to you right so it, it goes back to, to to them comparing them their lives their their um, decisions to yours which is unfair right like we all don't have the same experiences the, the same um, opportunities but I do get what you were saying though. Like I understand that you you it is a highlight reel. It is YouTube is a highlight reel, Instagram is a highlight reel. So they only see the pretty things. Um, they never get to see the real everyday things. And which is you know back going back to my Instagram, since the very beginning I try really hard to show the real side of things, mm -hmm. but it's still hard. It's still hard to do that um, because people will choose to see what they want to see. Yeah. Right. And so, and so I think that's why people like to um, shame you from, you know, with, with the choices that you make with, it's, it's, it's just really dumb. Like even for a car, I remember when I was talking about getting a Kia. And so I'm a big car guy. Like, you know, I get it. I get the whole, um, there's always just that friendly jab between car people that, oh, you got a Kia, you're driving a Kia. It's like, it's, it's just one of those things that the Kia is, you know, known as not the most appealing brand when it comes to uh, to vehicles. I know my, my wife has a Kia, and uh, it's been nothing but problems. <laughs> it's actually the the opposite for me, and so I love Kia, and if for some reason, you know, I was sharing this in my stories, and I, I've gotten a, a couple of comments. They're like, hey, "Why'd you get a Kia?" I'm like, well, "I don't know. I like it," and they're like, "Why would you like a Kia?" I don't know. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> my, my wife, wrong with my wife loves her car. She absolutely loves it. I mean, to be fair, I mean, we had a problem which we couldn't diagnose and it took forever. Now, the ironic thing is one of my best friends, Paul uh, Metchetti on Instagram, he works for a Kia garage. And it was like, mm -hmm. dude, what is wrong with our car? Like, can you just like, um, we, we sent it through another garage and we then gave it to him. And he was like, yeah, it's this, this, this. And it was, it was a really easy fix in the end. But it was like, oh, man, we've bought a dud we've bought it was a second hand car we bought as well but mm. it's um yeah no, they're cool you know and the thing is it's who cares it's yours you know who cares? It's, it's, it's your exactly. car the, the most frustrating thing is like especially like in particular to you on youtube is like people kind of feel like they have a right to be negative and the thing is they totally disregard that you're a real person creating that mm -hmm. content now i would totally get it if you were a controversial youtuber Oh, yeah. There is yeah. controversial mm -hmm. YouTubers, there are controversial TikTokers, there are controversial whatevers. They they go out there and put themselves in a position where they are controversial for the sake of uh, viral likes and and to engage a reaction. So, of course, you, you put yourself in that position, you get you reap what you sow. And those people are very good at dealing with the critic. And even if they go back in a toxic, negative kind of way, well, they were putting out a toxic kind of opinion or whatever they were inviting it they were inviting it yeah i think if yeah. you're a, they knew what was exactly coming. so mm -hmm. i think in that respect you kind of go fair dues it's a 50 50 kind of give receive i think if you're a positive content creator and you're putting content out there that's quite positive and you get those people that come back 
and give you that dislike within five seconds. And you know, they put those comments on on your page, Michael. And you know, in fairness, I go onto your YouTube and I scroll through trying to find these negative comments, and they are outweighed massively by the positives. But as yes, content creators, yes. we have fragile egos and fragile confidence. <laughs> and of course, when the negatives come up, you focus. Why on, is that so well, you know, true? Why, why is Michael not put co- you know all the nice comments on his Instagram? He's focused on the negative because that uh, that definitely definitely grabs that insecurity we all have Mm -hmm. of wanting to be liked and respected and seen as either good at what we do or a expert in what we do and we we concentrate we kind of like really kind of go introverted into those negative comments and think i'm not doing it right but michael you had a hundred people that told you you were doing it right but there was five. There was five yeah. that told you you didn't have a gaming setup and your <laughs> mouse wasn't the right kind of gaming mouse. And those are the ones that stay with you. And that's they the do, same yeah. for all life. All life. Mm-hmm. In so whatever true. you do, we as humans focus on the negatives. And it is frustrating as you like. So what would you what would your message be for content creators? Chelsea and and Matt, what would you say? For those who like to gear shame for even if not as content creators, but just as people like my musician uh, friend, the, 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 the person who suggested this, uh, this episode, what would you say to them? Don't worry about the haters. They're everywhere. Just enjoy creating, create with what you have. Don't worry about what everyone else has or because that's where you get in trouble is when you start buying things that you think you need to create this content. So just Use what you have. I mean, there's can a you imagine, there's a famous expression imagine? that says you can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. And I think mm-hmm. it's the same for content creation. Surround yourself with people that are overwhelmingly supportive and positive and listen to those people first. Um, it's, it's, it's all, you're always going to have people that have that kind of negative perception of you. And it's, I'm, I'm a hypocritical if I say, I don't worry about them. I don't focus on them. I don't listen to the comments. If I get a negative comment on any of my videos, I think about it for hours. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe there's some comfort in the fact that it's not going to go away and we all deal with it in our own way. But whether you've got 10,000 followers or 50,000 subscribers, and I got this from Chris the other day as well, where he says, I just... I just hide comments and I hide the person. So obviously, you know, Chris at 75,000 subscribers still feels the same way as I do at 380, no, 340. Mm-hmm. I big myself up there a little bit too much. 340 <laughs> subscribers on YouTube. Like, You're so controversial. Oh, my man. I'm going to have some negative <laughs> comments on this podcast after this. <laughs> you said 380. You're only at 340. Um, you, know, it, you know, I don't think it matters what your size is we as humans still feel the same way we want to be validated Absolutely. you know yeah. criticism where criticism is due if it's constructive if it's done from a place of yeah i didn't really agree with that i love your video by the way but i feel like this 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 mm-hmm. i to- I, I support that i don't support blind positivity because that doesn't help you as a creator grow yeah but if someone Let's talk about validation really quick Um, because that's a very strong word and it's very important. And I think as people, we always look for validation, Mm -hmm. right? But unfortunately, sometimes we use numbers to validate that. Like, for example, Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm going back to what you said, Matt, uh, I am not immune to negative comments. I just know how to sidestep it kind of, because I grew up always being made fun of with, by my cousins. And I'm like one of the shortest people that you will probably be me. This is you why you're always sat meet. down when we do this podcast. <laughs> exactly. You know, if I should be con if I'm gonna be controversial, I should probably start talking about my height on YouTube. Like try to, you know, build myself up as this really tall person. Yeah. Just, just be like I, 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 bo- I bought idea. a sit stand desk, but when it was at full height, I couldn't reach my keyboard. <laughs> just start making some, <laughs> some <laughs> Yeah, just like ridiculous <laughs> claims. But um it's a. Uh, it doesn't mean that I'm not affected like if i were to read all negative comments all day oh yeah it's definitely going to affect the way i feel the way i think and that's normal so i guess for people who are 
uh, facing the same thing, don't be afraid that you're you're affected. Like, don't be bothered by it that you are affected. That's completely normal. It takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of realiz realization, a, a little bit of uh, maybe um, reframing your mind. Uh, after a while, it can get better. Like, that's one of the reasons why I share this in my comments. I mean, in my stories. Because at first, it felt better for me. It felt better for me that because I, fe I feel sick when I see really bad comments, right? But if I hide it, if I hide it, I'm like, I know it's still there. And I read it already. And it's going to bother me this entire time. So <laughs> I know that what I noticed is that if I shared it in my stories, this was in the very beginning. If I shared it in my stories, I can get two things. I can get either a people agreeing, saying, yeah, you are pretty dumb. Or people saying, no, they don't know what they're talking about. And so that made me feel um, a little bit better because so I'm that's expressing your validation. It. Yeah, and it's, it's that, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, that's, that's my validation. Like people saying that they're wrong. And so mm -hmm. I started to do that. And then, but here comes a problem though. Now I feel like if anyone see, says something wrong about or something mean to me, I need to get people's opinion first. Like, what do you guys think? You know, is he right? And so now my my sense of of uh, what do you call this like maybe respect self respect or something lies on you know based on other people's opinion which isn't correct you know I could easily say this video um, like I almost commented this someone said something about my content they said like oh this is wrong and I look at the dislikes it had like 135 dislikes and but the upside to it is that. Um, I had like 6,000 likes. So I was going to say, well, I think the 6,000 people disagree. You know what I mean? But I also didn't want to perpetuate that whole um, look at the numbers, right? So what I want to, what the message I want to bring to people is that it's okay to feel bad when someone says something mean to you because that's completely normal. That's being human. What you do after that is very important. So to me, the, the thing that always boil, uh, goes back is, you know, am I being genuine to myself? Am I being honest to myself? Am I sharing this so that I can pretend to be someone special, pretend to be like better than everyone else? If you come from a place with some sort of malice, you know what I mean? Like your intention, like going back to what Matt said, if your intention was to just create something controversial just so you can gather all the likes and, and views, then yeah, you will reap, you will definitely reap what you sow. But if you are be being genuine, you won't have any problems with that. And here's one thing that I actually do that helps me during times when I'm just like, you know, feeling down. This helps me validate or makes me feel better without asking for other people's opinion. So when I have good days, when I have good days, I write down the things that make me feel good. For example, um, I accomplished a couple of things and or a, a client of mine was really happy with, with my recent project. I write that down. And I'll say, company this and that sent me a very nice email saying I did really, really well. Um, or I can say, you grew your, your YouTube or your Instagram account to this much in a span of how many months? These things, the public will never see. But these notes are from, for, you, for you, for myself. Mm -hmm. So when I'm feeling really low or down, when I feel like I need validation from other people, I look at this and it's a personal thing. No one else sees this. It's just me. Because I know these are true. These are the things that actually did, I did myself and I feel good about it. And sometimes we look for that validation. We, we, we look for those wins and we share them because we want the validation. We want people to say, yeah, you're good. But it can also backfire, right? It can also backfire because what if, you know, some people are not going to agree with you. And what if there are no people to say that, yes, you are right. Then it's just, I, I guess to me personally, I don't want my my sense of worth um to hang on you know other people's opinion it should be personal i think i, th I think one of the big things is like you and me have a very similar sense of humor in that we self-depreciate yeah so that helps i think <laughs> it, it really does help you set your expectations really low <laughs> waiting for that negativity to come in but i think the thing is you know when you've when you've lost your hair at 21 and you are four for eight, whatever your height is, 
you you <laughs> you learn to deal with it. You learn to self depreciate to form a protective bubble. So mm -hmm. when people come to you with negativity, if it comes from a good place, um, it's fine. But the thing is, we self depreciate because we prepare ourselves for that negativity. We pr there's a, there's a word I use in sales. It's called preempting the negative. Okay. If you preempt the negative. And it's a bit like Eminem in Eight Mile. He preempted the negative in that rap. So the guy on the other side had nothing to come with because he preempted mm -hmm. it. So I preempt I have a massive forehead. I'm not wearing a cap tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preempting. I'm, Again. <laughs> I'm going to keep this for the theme. I'm preempting, I'm sure. I'm preempting I'm goofy. I'm preempting I'm not good at PCs. I'm preempting I'm not good at gaming. So if you don't pick that up in my content, I'm going to be frustrated. Because I've preempted mm -hmm. it. I've preempted it. I've told you I'm not an expert at, at gaming. I'm just a gamer. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a, like, there's loads of people that are experts at keyboards. I don't have a clue. I know what looks good and I know what I like. Yes. And that's what yeah. it comes down to. So you preempt the fact that no one goes on my Instagram page, or at least I hope they don't. There are people that think maybe I'm sort of some tech guru or whatever. I'm not. I'm just a dad who likes pretty looking things. And I like to play games and I like to put mm -hmm. lights up and I like to take photos. And, you know, anyone on Instagram hopefully knows that. And I guarantee everyone on Instagram that knows you two knows that. But YouTube's mm -hmm. a funny thing that people go onto Instagram, to, uh, sorry, onto YouTube to look for people that are experts because they want to get the information. And mm -hmm. the thing is, you're, not, you're not putting your, your content out there as experts. It's a life in the day of Chelsea. It's Chelsea's view on a MacBook M1. It's mm -hmm. Michael's view on, uh, what are they called? Air, Air Max, whatever the headsets are, I can't afford. AirPods Pro. You see, I'm yeah. shit at this. Nice. So, you know, they, they go on there and think, this guy has Hollywood production value. Chelsea has, you know, Hollywood production value. Therefore, I'm going to automatically put them in a category of, they must be experts at what they do. They must be experts. Mm -hmm. And if they don't say something that I believe to be an expert analysis, I'm going to rip them to shreds. When actually, we're just out, we're hobbyists. We're out here doing it because we enjoy we it. Hobbyists, we're yeah. out here because we enjoy taking pictures. We enjoy making videos. We try and make videos to help our immediate circles, our immediate friends go, yeah, those headphones did look like they were plastic even though they're not. Yeah, I still, know. I, still, I still stand by it. I'm like, they felt like plastic. Yeah, well, that, I, I guarantee like that. you if I guarantee you if people didn't read the specs, I guarantee you 100%, if people didn't read the specs and they just felt it, they would think it's plastic. Yeah, they would. And that's real. And the funny thing is people don't like you being real. And that's the, that's the truth yeah. of it. They don't, Isn't that funny? They don't like it's very it. Funny, yeah. They don't like it. So you know what? Fuck them. You know, I'm sorry if this is, I'm sorry if this is before 9 p.m. on the watershed, but you know, I don't normally like to, I'm, not, I'm even going to, I'm even going to push so far as to do it in an accent. Fuck them. <laughs> so for those, for the, I love it. For those over in America, I do too. You know, we, you know, we, we do put ourselves in this bubble. We do put ourselves in our like immediate click. And, and this comes back to what we said with Chris the other night of like, you know, what does it take to give a follow back? We get lots of people are like, oh, follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. You know, can you share my post? Follow me. And the thing is, we do as creators create a bubble. And the bubble mm -hmm. is a really annoying word that's come out in the last kind of year with COVID and stuff. But we do create this creative bubble as well, because you need to hang around with other people that are overwhelmingly supportive or positive or just respect the journey. Yes. They might not mm -hmm. agree with you, but they're not going to call you out on something because calling out, what is it? What is, what is the purpose of calling someone out? What does it solve? Michael, you don't have RGB. Shame on you. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea, you look like a man. Yeah. Chelsea, <laughs> damn it. You look like some singer from the 1980s with amazing hair. You know. His name is Hank Green, by I'm the gonna way. I'm going to search it. I have no idea. I'm going to search it. I'm going to search it right now. Yeah. And I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna up. tell you if you I look just, like Hank, I found it Hank Green, you handsome woman, you. <laughs> <laughs> it, he's from the. the oh, I know this show. guy. I know this. I've seen you him do? in stuff. I I, I, I have seen him in stuff. Like literally, the only comparison is you wear glasses. I could look like Hank Green because I have glasses. 
Hank of Green. Of course, that's easy. the only comparison. Well, I think I'm more handsome than Hank Green. But I For God's I, sakes. I, I could be mistaken with Hank Green. Like, like, this is not again, Chelsea. <laughs> literally, because you wear glasses, you look like Hank Green. <laughs> you wear glasses. You look like him. You look like Hank like Green. Another, another one of my favorite comments, it's... He commented on my dream sit-stand desk. He said, one of the worst videos. So was this another... the second time he commented? No, this is a different person. Oh, okay, okay, a... okay. I can just see that it's a guy because of his profile picture. And then another person wrote, you made such a damn mess of this video. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, also okay. unfortunate because, you know, let's face it, because Chelsea is a woman, people feel like it's easier to, yeah. to say mean mean things to her. I've I've seen this. You know, it's a not fun. You know, I have three sisters. I have three sisters. I have most of my cousins are are girls, and you know, uh, I have a daughter. And, and you know, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not blind to this sort of treatment towards mm-hmm. women. It's horrendous. So, like I'm very yeah. passionate about this because you're damned if you do. And you're damned if you don't. Bart Simpson said that. It was a great song. Yeah. I had the album. I had the album when I was in my Oh, teens. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do man. the Bart Man. Do, 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 do the Bart Man. We, we all had that. that. You're damned great. if you do. I need do. to buy this album now. Let's I, get I, it. I miss Let's that. get it on Spotify. You're damned if you do and you're <laughs> damned if you don't. So Chelsea, because you are a normal mum, woman, you know, normal person, you somehow don't fit the brief of what these guys look for when they're out there but i guarantee if you were the other way and you were some sort of you know burlesque um you know sexualized image you'd have a different type of people going where you've only got where you are Mm -hmm. because of this and that and and, you know it's a damned if you do and damned if you don't and i think you know it really is you know uh, as someone who doesn't have the looks and the hair. I, I get it. You know, I get it. People are looking for people who look like Michael and they get me. And they're like, wow, this wasn't what I signed up for. <laughs> this this, this is not the look of YouTube I'm going for. This guy has a shiny forehead and, you know, a, a really laggy stream and and uh, and all of that. But, you know, it's, it's very frustrating and I get it because you are an authentic female creator. It's what I would, if you said, like, draw a female creator, I'd draw Hank Green with a wig. You know, I, <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> I would be like, you know, this, this is what I, you know, this is like a mum who has, you know, a real life so good. and kids and dogs and has the time. Like, I, I, you know, I look at my wife, for example, and, you know, people would look at her and go, she has this Instagram account, which is all around fitness and it's her journey. Mm-hmm. And, she struggles with it man she she's got a metabolism that doesn't work for her she's she's not the tallest person so she struggles with it because when you're like you know when you're half dwarf then you know you don't get the results that you want to get but she i guarantee you she works harder than anyone else i know she watches her diet she cooks for the family she cooks separately for herself she runs she's just done a half marathon she runs two 10ks a week she works, she did a fitness thing in the lounge tonight um, on YouTube, on the big TV, um, doing some fitness thing. And then she's gone off to work a night shift to look after animals and to try and save animals from dying. And then she's doing, That's then awesome. she's doing homeschooling. And then she's looking after me. Um, and then she's, you know, she's doing all of this stuff. But people would look at her and go, you've posted a picture in your Lycra, you know, and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, who the fuck are you to judge? Because you don't know all the stuff that's gone on in the background. Who are you to judge yeah. Chelsea? Because mm-hmm. you don't like the way she does stuff. Because she's done that while she's looking after a family, while she's looking after her kids, while she's looking after that dog that barked 25 minutes ago, while she's looking after mm-hmm. her husband, you know, while she's doing all this other <laughs> stuff. It's like, the problem is people look at it and go, your life is easy. Yes. Michael, your life yes. is easy. And it's the exact Chelsea, your life opposite. is easy. And it's not. You're yeah. doing all of this. Like, that's why I respect Chris so much as well, because he's managed to put a video out every week for 52 weeks for a year of good quality. Because I, I mean, I did, I, I did pick him up on it and go, you know, mate, you live in a museum because every one of your rooms looks perfect. Like, my house is fucked right now. <laughs> there is no getting around it. Like, my dining room is like, it's imploded hey, tonight. It's imploded. You know you know what's funny is that I've never really shared this with anyone else, but um, my family knows this house that I live in was when we bought this. This was um, this house was built in the 
I think 2001. So it's still fairly new. Yeah. Right. It's 20 years old, but um, it was lived in by a, a rather large family. And when we saw it for the first time, it was nice because it had all the decor and they had this theme going on. The main reason for us, you know, deciding on this house was first, it was within our budget. And next, it was also near, it, it was in a ideal location. So, but the moment they moved out and we were about to, they, we, we were given the keys. I kid you not, when my wife and I walked in, it was a rainy day too. We walked in and looked at it. The house was empty and dirty. We were like, holy shit, what did we get ourselves into? That was the reaction. No one ever cleans so, the house when you buy it. No, and it's also right? just, yeah. you don't see, when you see, when you remove all the furniture, everything that makes a house homey, it's mm -hmm. just an empty shell. It's gone. And you see all the defects. You see all the terrible paint, the walls, the, the leaky sinks and everything. It was a lot of work. A lot of work had to be done. And we didn't do it right away. We did it like little by little as much as we can. And then, but, you know, the, going, going to this office, people would always say, you have the best office. You, you have a space that you could work in. I'm like, it wasn't like this. It honestly was not like this. It it had to be like there were so many days where I'm just like, I don't want to share this side of the office because this is the only pretty side. It's a work in progress. But again, it's a highlight reel, right? So people only mm -hmm. choose to see the things that they want to see. And going back to like people who like to throw negative comments, because when they see something nice that they don't have, the only thing that they feel like would make them feel better is by giving excuses for themselves. And that excuse would be, um, oh, the only reason this person got that is because he had something nice to start off with. Like, no, that's not that's not true. I mean, some people are lucky, luckier than others. But I guess the, one of the reasons I don't want to, I don't really talk about it is because it never really, I'm the type of person who never really thought about it that way, right? Like people would look at me and say, oh, you have the perfect life. Like, uh, that is far from the truth. Like you see, Same. You, you see a normal guy here who has struggles, who have parenting um, woes every day. You know, I have like marriage woes every day. I have like one of the things that I've been open about, I was telling Chelsea about this, is that every time someone says, uh, I'm so lucky that my husband is, help, is supporting me. I'm so lucky that my wife or my girlfriend or my boyfriend is supporting me and all that. And I'm like, you know, I'm quiet here in the corner. I'm like, that's really not the case for me because it's it's the exact opposite yeah I exact opposite and i'm not i'm not ashamed to say that I, because i understand why i understand why my wife um is the way she is it's not out of malice it's just her personality and she doesn't understand but through the years like she's slowly come around and started to see oh yeah you know what you do know what you're talking about yeah <laughs> you know? it's, it's it's stuff like that so Instead of using all these excuses, I guess, is what I uh, want to say um, for people. First of all, for people who who feel like they're, they need to validate their, themselves by buying the things or, you know, using the things that other people said you should be using. No, no, you have to think about yourself first. Like, think about what makes you happy. Think about what makes you happy. And all those people that feel the same way, they're out there. They're out there. They're just, they're just not as loud as the crazies. The crazy ones are always the loud ones, right? The ones that want to be heard, the, like the, the small guys. The Karens, the Karens of YouTube, they're all, they're all the out Karens, there. The Karens, yeah. They're, they're always going to be... So don't let those those people bring you down. It's normal. It's normal to feel upset. But don't let them bring you down and don't let them feel like you need to um, prove yourself to them. They are not your audience. And I mean, I'm looking at like the, the five comments or the five people that that say, you know, mean things to me, five, 10, 20, however many people say mean things to me. I'm like, oh, good. Now, at least I know who to stay away from. You know what I mean? Like, these are not the people that I cater to. And yeah. going back to that's your- not, That's not the audience you want. That's not the audience of what you want. And you, you know what's funny too, Matt, when you were sharing your story about your wife, um, it is unfortunate that we live in a, in a world where it's, everything is aesthetics, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to um, like fitness, right? But in my experience, uh, my wife was also in the fitness uh, world for a little bit. And in my experience, the most humble people are the ones that put in the work. Just like our friend Peter Lindgren. Peter Lindgren. 
He puts in the work. The nicest guy yeah. ever. Because you know what? When, when it comes to fitness, no one else can take that away from you. You can never say, you can never say to a person who has put in the work that's, that they didn't deserve it, that someone else did it for them. So your wife, like no one can take that away from her. Oh, she's a hero. And the thing is, she's, yeah. she's really tough anyway. So I don't think she really would care. But like, mm -hmm. you know, if I get in my Lycra and people give me some negative comments, I, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm not as I'm not as strong as her. She's she comes from a military background, so her dad was, uh, his dad, uh, his dad, her dad. <laughs> That's my other partner, Pedro. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love her it. Her dad protected the queen. Oh no way! He was oh like the queen, the of queen England. of England. He was uh, a Coldstream guard and okay. Queen's guard, and he had the the big furry hats. The you know the big furry hats that you see on things. Mm -hmm. He protected protected yep. the queen. He was a tough guy. Um, sadly, passed away far too young a couple of years ago. But you know, mm -hmm. she again looked after the whole family. She was a tough, tough. She's a tough cookie. Like I'm, I'm the mm -hmm. emotional wreck. Um, I, I'm the one that cries over everything and, you know, cries at films and, you know, she teases me for it, but she, she is a hero, but even people that are super, super, super strong feel it. They feel the negativity. They do take it on board. If someone said you look, don't look good in that outfit that you wore, or you don't look good, you know, you're not training hard enough, whatever. I know she'd feel it deep down. So I guess the message to people mm -hmm. out there is it goes back to a very old expression. If you've got nothing kind to say, don't say anything at all. Don't say it at all. However... Yeah. We do appreciate constructive criticism if it comes from a good place. But I guarantee you the people that have said those negative comments on YouTube to you, Michael, you in particular, because you seem to be a trigger point. Uh, I don't think me and Chelsea are quite so triggered, but, you know, you do get a lot of them. But I, I, I think those people are not the people that will put themselves out. Like we say, I call them gray faces, gray faces. They don't they don't exist in the real world. They have no subscribers. They don't put any content out there. They're just on YouTube sponging off other people. And it's the same for, for Instagram. They won't be on there putting content out of a high quality. They're just out there to judge you. And yeah. you're a big content creator. Chelsea, you're a big content creator. I've got big numbers on Instagram and that's it. Nowhere else. Um, Matt just keeps downplaying himself. I this know he does because he has more. You have more followers than I do Even, on Instagram in both of my combined my combined platforms. Yeah, so you're probably a bigger content creator. than I know. Me. I, well, uh, this comes back to self depreciation again. It's like you know you protect mm -hmm. yourself by mm -hmm. self depreciation, but it, it just, you know the same time like yeah you know negativity and stuff. I don't if if it was coming from people that I knew, it would really upset me. If it was coming from a place that people had turned on me and stuff, but I keep putting myself out there as Matt. If you like Matt, you don't like my content, you're probably not going to say, Matt, your content shit. You're going to say, you're just not going to say anything, are you? Because that, that's mm -hmm. the reality of it. But the people mm -hmm. that are out there just going, Chelsea, you look like a man with glasses. <laughs> Michael, isn't that great? Michael, That's the best one. You're, 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 so you're obviously you're, so tall. you're obviously a millionaire, and you should be the best at everything. You should be the Tony Stark of fucking gaming. You know, you should. You Michael. should be. You, should. you know, Playboy philanthropist, millionaire, whatever. It, you know, it. It's just so frustrating. And you know, the, the thing is, there are a lot of people. I would hope there's a lot of people listening to this who have 500 Instagram followers and have yeah. 50. YouTube followers and very close to myself. But I hope there were people that are in that position listening to this that that can relate. Relating is a big thing. It's a massive part of my life is called relating. In my job, people like me because I'm relatable. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm I, in my job should be around hard sales. I should be the stereotypical suit wearing, slick talking salesman who would sell his grandmother to get a deal. That's what my industry has a perception of and that's what I should be. I don't get the figures that I should get because I don't believe in that ethos. And I don't believe Absolutely. in it on Instagram. You could get more followers by doing X, Y, Z. I'm just me. And if you like me, follow me, follow my content, enjoy it. You're going to have fun. If you don't like it, don't follow me. And that's why that's we've invited you back. That. I was just about to mm -hmm. say that is the reason you're here and that is such a good way to end 
our little discussion. Well, it's definitely yes. not for the video quality, my hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not for that that hairstyle, for sure. And it's not because I look like a man either. So <laughs> And not because I'm tall. Not a, not at all. You know, it's a it's really that, Matt. Like I think to mm-hmm. like what Chelsea said, the best you know, to end this this discussion is I don't know where I was going with that I got lost for a second. <laughs> I don't no, it, I do. I, be relatable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just be yeah. relatable. That's basically what I was going to say. That's good. Go ahead. I was going to say something that I do that really helps. I don't know if this will help anybody else, but I've started looking at the thumbs down and the hate comments as my video is doing good. If I'm not getting thumbs down or hate comments, I'm like, my video is not doing good. Uh, no, that that's actually a legitimate... You know? um, measurement i think yeah it helps because more people are seeing it yeah more people are seeing mm-hmm. it yeah you have to and you're honest you're honest with your own work right like you can you can you know if your work is is crappy or not like you know by the time you publish that you hit that publish button you know if your work is is good or not right yeah. so you're right like if you start to get all this thumbs down you must be doing something right because right? if you know that you put your best out there Regardless of, you know, it's it doesn't have to be best on, you know, someone else's standard. As long as you know, you're, again, going back to being genuine about your content. As long as you know that you put your best, it doesn't matter how many dislikes uh, that you get. Like, I'm actually kind of hoping, kind of hoping my AirPods Max video has more dislikes. I haven't checked it yet, but has more dislikes than than likes because I think the last time I checked it was like 50-50. Yeah, I like, I, fr- I framed there's that. There's a race. I framed that on my wall that 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 <laughs> that YouTube video just as inspiration of like even the yeah. best, even the best can get it. I think yeah. <laughs> I th- I think I think we should do a challenge. I th- I think it would be great to do you know, all of the content creators listeners. I think we should do a challenge of some sort of a of a self-depreciating put down and eight we we'll call it the 8 mile challenge. I think you know, like I'm. I'm, I'm afraid I'm of gonna that. Call, I'm and gonna, then I'll be crying. I'm going to call some people out. Like Matt and Vision, your house is far too nice. I want to see. I want to see the downside of your. I want to see your clogged toilet, and I want to see your messy room where all the laundry is. And I'd be like, "Hi, I'm Matt. I have that room. Yeah, exactly. I have. We, we all I have, have that. that room. I have six of those rooms. <laughs> I think we need to have that. Like, hi, I'm Michael. This is my shithole. That's so good. We could do a, a whole episode of just like everybody showing the shittiest. I think so. Oh, that'd be awesome. The best or content like, creators, like you think I'm perfect. Come have a look at this. Like you, I love that. You see my, my podcast setup. Look at my shitty. Laundry. Come have a look at my my bedroom, which is horrendous because it's just full of clothes because we haven't finished the girls' room, so it's overflow. Come have a look at my well. Like I said, any room in our house. Come have a look at any room in our house right now because this room is now imploded. My lounge has got a desk in it. it, it I think there's there's something yeah. there. One of the things that I definitely want. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. And you know, we're, we're going to ask him if if he's he's down. But um, one of the my favorite stories is uh, of Landon. Landon, by the way. Yes. And he's like remember, remember Chelsea the first when we mm-hmm. he showed up on camera. We're like, whoa full-time filmmaker like look at that like that's yeah. a professional setup right there we were starstruck and then his audio was shit <laughs> his audio was the worst and he laughs it about was it the worst. he laughs oh, yeah, about he loves it. it yeah he loves and it. that's that's the thing that i love about landon you know he's like he's mm-hmm. like oh sorry i made a mistake you know we're people we we're are people oh, we are people like i come Except to these podcasts that, yeah. and immediately we log on to zoom and i'm like Fuck, look at their cameras. <laughs> look at me. I'm not like my my lips aren't even syncing with my fucking audio. <laughs> like I'm I've got a delay over here. I look like some sort of special needs person. <laughs> you know, look at me. I'm like some sort of kind of like shiny lumberjack. What's it's, going on? <laughs> oh my god. All right. So true. We can go on and on and on. But um I just wanted to say, Matt. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part Thank of this. You. And we had a blast. Yeah. If if um for people who are wondering why we didn't have a podcast last week, it's because we were on Clubhouse with again we with were. Matt. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like one of the guests. Buddy. I think we need to do the coffee with creators and an English dude. I think we need to rebrand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great <laughs> idea. Coffee and tea with creators. Coffee, something like coffee that. and tea with the English bloke. <laughs> coffee and tea. <laughs> Chelsea, tea can we sign off by doing your there. English accent? Because I've, I've done a couple of Americanisms. Oh, tonight. I love that. Yeah. Can we do a, a, a little bit of an excerpt I, from Harry Potter? 
Harry Potter, Hermione. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. And I've just forgot my whole <laughs> ending bit because I'm doing a different accent. I love it. So thank you again for hanging out with your favorite coffee and pizza crew. Until next time, I'm Chelsea. I'm Michael. And I'm Matt yes. from uh, some place in America that doesn't exist. <laughs> Signing off. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. See ya.